What's up, guys? Alvaro here, and welcome back to the Bilingual Stock Market Channel. Let's go ahead and take a look at the earnings reports of Activision Blizzard, Pinterest, and obviously, let's take a look at the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 in order to try to figure out what could be potentially happening throughout this week in the markets. So without further ado, let's get right into it. S&P 500 goes down today 0.28% and closed today's trading session at 4,118 points. I have three positive aspects to point out when it comes to the bulls and three positive aspects to point out when it comes to the bears. So let's start out with the bullish case. So first of all, the bulls managed to close today's trading session above the 100-day moving average at around 4,115 points. That is obviously very positive for them. We have a rising five-day moving average. You guys can see the five-day moving average, which is this white line over here on the four hour chart. So the fact that the bulls are trading as of now above the five day moving average, that implies that they are in control of minor time frames, also very positive. And we are, we are also about to see the unfolding of a golden cross on the four hour chart with the 50 SMA about to cross, about to cross above the 180 SMA. So this is also positive for the bulls. When it comes to the bears, first of all, we have a very high reading when it comes to the relative strength index. You guys can see how the RSI of the S&P 500 is very elevated at around 75 points. That implies that we are very likely to see some sort of decent pullback sooner rather than later. Second, we have declining moving averages, 200-day moving average, 100-day moving average, and also the 180 SMA on the four-hour shirt. And most importantly, we are in a major downtrend. So despite the fact that the bulls have made a very uh, a very noticeable progress since uh, the S&P 500 so far bottomed out near 3,630 points. We are still in a major downtrend, but we cannot rule out the fact that this rally still has gasoline in the tank. So in my opinion, I think that buyers or rather sellers are going to show up near 4,170 points. In the case of the S&P, we're talking about a critical resistance in which the bulls failed on multiple occasions back in early June. And when it comes to a pullback, I think that the S&P is likely to come across with buyers near 4,080 points. This area acted as support on several occasions as well in early June. You guys can see over here how in early June, a bullish flag pattern started to unfold in the case of the S&P 500. And this bull flag pattern was absolutely invalidated in early June. And after that, we saw a massive drop of the S&P 500 that brought this index down to 3,628 points. So this spread between 4,170 points and 4,080 points is very important for either the bulls or the bears. But be careful, guys. We are very overextended over here. So for the bulls in order, in my opinion, for the bulls in order to be able to keep on going higher, they would have to start to consolidate the slightly above 4,080 points for at least four or five trading sessions. We might see another bull flag pattern starting to unfold over here that would allow the RSI of the S&P 500 to go lower. And if the RSI of the S&P is sitting at around 60, 65 points, maybe 55 points, the bulls might be gathering momentum in order to make another push higher. But with this very overheated reading, when it comes to the RSI, you have to be very, but very careful when it comes to the S&P 500. NASDAQ 100, what happened over here today? The NDX went down not a lot, only 0.06%. It almost broke even. And it closed today's trading session at 12,940 points. And as I just said, in the case of the S&P 500, the NDX is also very overheated. We can see the RSI sitting at 72 points on the four-hour chart. That is obviously negative for the bulls. However, and as I just said, in the case of the S&P 500, the bulls of the NDX managed to close today's trading session above the 100-day moving average above 12,864 points. We can also see over here a rise in five-day moving average. That implies that the bulls are gaining control or are in control of minor time frames. And we also can see a golden cross with the, in the case of the NDX, the golden cross already unfolded with the 50 SMA crossing above the 180 SMA on this four-hour share. This actually occurred 
back on July 28th. So the Bulls have a lot of uh, points uh, in their favor as of now in the case of the NDX, but mind you, and as I just said, in the case of the S&P 500, we are in a major downtrend and we still have declining moving averages, as you guys can see over here, in the case of the 200-day moving average and the 100-day moving average. In my opinion, if this rally keeps on going higher, the bulls are going to are going to have a hard time trying to burst above 13,050 points. They actually failed today right at 13,050 points. This is also a previous support back from early March and also a previous support back from late February. So in the short term, this is going to be the most important task for the bulls of the NDX. And if we happen to see some sort of decent retracement, which would be healthy for the NDX because it is, as I just told you guys, a bit overextended, I would look for support near 12,400 points. This is the lower line of this bull flag pattern that was invalidated back in early June. So watch out for these two areas for either support of resistance, 12,400 points each for 12,430 points to the downside and to the upside when it comes to resistance, 13,080 points. Now let's go ahead and take a look at Pinterest, which just reported earnings. And in the case of Pinterest, take a look at this. The stock of this company is going on an absolute tour. Can we pull up here the one day, one minute shirt? And mind you guys, the year, I already took a look at the earnings report of Pinterest. It, it was a very poor report. So let me pull up here the live news tab. And when I saw this, this report of Pinterest, guys, I came to the conclusion that the markets are definitely looking for a bottom. So everything looks pretty acceptable for the markets as of now. So let me see. Okay, so what happened over here? Now this is a new, come on, thinkers, and give me the information, come on. Um, so global monthly active users down 5% year over year to 433 million versus analyst consensus of 431.8 million. So the bar was lowered, guys, for Pinterest. In my opinion, this is a sign that obviously the markets are looking for a bottom. So our monthly active users are down 5% year over year, which is obviously, which, which isn't good news, obviously. However, the analyst consensus, the analyst consensus was at 431.8 million. So the consensus of the analysts were below the the, the figure that uh, Pinterest ended up uh, posting, which implies that monthly active users are declining or declined or dropped 5% year over year. So uh, as I just told you guys, as I just told you guys, the bar was set very low for Pinterest. And uh, because of that, they were able to beat the estimate when it comes to monthly active users. So EPS came in at 11 cents, missing the estimate of 18 cents. And sales came in at $660 million, missing the estimate of $673.66 million. So this was a very poor report. And guess what, guys? Pinterest is going on an absolute third after hours up 25%. So are the markets looking for a bottom? Yes, they are. So... When it comes to any technical analysis that I can um, tell you guys over here, the stock of this company is severely overextended. You guys can see the RSI sitting at 86 points. Unbelievable. So the bulls are failing after hours right at a previous resistance back from early May and also at a previous support back from February 14. So this is obviously not a stock that I am planning to take a trade with um, in the near term. I get. I suppose that a, that a lot of people got calls or a lot of people got in the big casino um, before this earnings report was posted. So I don't see pins going above 25 bucks. I think that we are very likely to see a massive profit taken tomorrow as soon as the trading session opens. So I would be expecting some buyers to show up near $25.64. This is a previous resistance back from July 20th. And this is also a previous support back from March 14. And that also, by the way, coincides with the 100-day moving average. 
near this price, $21.20. So maybe any drop down to $21.50, $21.20. And if we happen to have another green day in the market, might be a spot from which we can start a long trade on Pinterest. And if Pinterest happens to open, guys, tomorrow at 25 bucks, with the RSI being this elevated, I would be considering getting boots. Now let's go ahead and take a look at Activision Blizzard. What happened over here? It goes up today 16% and it closed today's trading session at $80. Nothing really important has happened recently on Activision Blizzard because we are waiting for the confirmation that the deal with Microsoft is going to go through. And Activision Blizzard is up after hours, uh, almost 0.50%, nothing spectacular. So what happened over here? So let me see if I happen to have the report. I should have it. So adjusted EPS came in at 84 cents, pretty much in line. And revenue came in at $1.64 billion. And net bookings came in at $1.64 billion. But I don't have the competitive when it comes to revenue. I think that I watched on CNBC that they beat on revenue but I don't have the competitive. So let me pull up here the four hour shirt. What could be potentially happening tomorrow in the case of Activision Blizzard? And I think if I remember correctly that Microsoft wants to acquire Activision Blizzard at a price of 84 bucks per share. So I don't think that Activision is going to go um, way higher than the current price or way lower than, than that price. As long as the as long as we don't have the confirmation that the deal is actually going to be approved by the authorities that are reviewing it. So there is not really much to say over here, guys. I don't see Activision Blazer going above 82 bucks. This is a previous resistance back from March and February. And maybe a visit of Activision down to the 200 day moving average near 75 bucks might be a viable dip if we are um, believing that the deal with Microsoft is actually going to go through. So this is not a stock that um, creates a lot of excitement in the markets because we're pretty much waiting for the confirmation that the deal with Microsoft is actually going to go through. And with Activision Blizzard, I am going to wrap up this video. Thank you very much for your attention and thank you very much for hanging out with me once again. Remember and keep in mind, guys, that here, on the bilingual stock market channel we are posting a stock market update videos mondays tuesdays and thursdays three or four hours after the market closes so if you want to get all of the notifications of all of our videos in a timely manner you have to be subscribed to this youtube channel but you also need to activate the notification bell right up there follow us on instagram as well guys at bilingual stock market and remember that this is the bilingual stock market channel the youtube channel in which we talk about the markets, but we do things differently because we talk about the markets in two different languages, English and Spanish, so you can pick your preferred language. But most importantly, this is the YouTube channel in which we know that the wonderful world of Wall Street is not for geniuses, it is for entrepreneurs just like you guys and myself. My name is Alvaro, and I will see you guys tomorrow once again along with my friend Mario two hours after the market closes. Peace out.